Hey, what is going on guys? DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the first NBA regular season slate of the year. And I cannot wait for this one. We have two fantastic matchups, Nets and Bucks. Warriors and Lakers. Super, super excited to talk about this. But if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. If you're unable to watch the videos, I also upload on Apple Podcasts. Link down below is called the DK DFS Show. If you're interested in signing for premium content, offer that on patreon.com. Few different packages, NBA package, NFL package. We cover uh, the main slate and the show on sites. And then eSports package, that includes Call of Duty and CSGO. And I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Prize Pick. So again, I'm sure if you guys have been watching my videos for a while now, you're familiar. But if this is your first time watching, I'll explain it really quick. So two different ways you can play for NBA. The first way is taking over under and fancy points. So for example, Kevin Durant projected for 54 fancy 54 fantasy points. Do you like the under or do you, do you like the over? Sorry, I can't talk. Or you can go over to single stat and take over under on points, rebounds, assists, three-pointers made, uh, free throws made. So if you guys want to try it out and sign up, use my code DKDFS. That is DKDFS, all one word. You'll get a 100% match up to $100. So you deposit using my code $100, you'll get a free $100 to play with. The reason I like prize picks, it's a nice change of pace. You're not playing against anyone, you're just playing against the house. Um, so again, if you guys want to try it out, make sure to use my code. But um, yeah, and then finally, I want to thank you guys again for continuing to come and check out all these videos, whether it be the NBA videos, NFL videos, the live streams. Really do appreciate all you guys. If you could leave a like button in the video, let's try to aim for 150 likes since it's opening day. Uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. I will be doing a YouTube live stream tomorrow, general Q&A. So make, make sure to check that one out as well. Um, all right, guys. So, yeah, let's get into this one. Uh, before we get into players and the prices, though, I want to look back my up here from the last preseason slate of the year, which went really well for myself. Um, still very tilted about Kyle Lowry and his 0 .3 fancy points per minute. If he just has an average game, it's a much, much bigger night for me. But, yeah, still cash pretty easily in tournaments, high stakes. Uh, so, Lowry, KPJ, Stevens, uh, Paul Reed, Bam, Steph, Giannis, and Drummond was my lineup. Um, you know, core plays of Steph and Giannis. Those are the two stars uh, I felt really safe about. Um, now I got I got into a guy like Lamar Stevens because we got news that Cleveland was going to only play their star or their main guy six to eight minutes. So uh, added him, added Dean Wade to the player pool. I used Paul Reed because Philadelphia was thin. Obviously paired him with Drummond. Uh, Bam and a bio, a little bit disappointing. Again, expected more from him and Kyle Lowry, but you had Kyle or you had Tyler the Hero shoot lights out. You had Jimmy play really, really well. So that was a little bit tilting. But all in all, it was still a really solid night. And we finished off the preseason on a, on a really good note, taking down the big fan duel tournament. Ten thousand dollars to first. Love to see it. As well as taking down the showdown slate. Um, so yeah. Congrats to all you guys on a very great preseason. Hope you guys all made some big money. And let's now talk about the two-game regular season slate. So, Nets and Bucks, 236 and a half over under, uh, the higher total game uh, of the two. Uh, the Bucks are one-point favorites, obviously without Kyrie Irving. And then Golden State and the Lakers are 228 over under, and the Lakers are currently three and a half point favorites. So, let's start it off with the Brooklyn. Okay, so at the top, we have Kevin Durant, James Harden, 9.9 .9 and 9.3 care respectively. I think both are really solid plays at the top without Kyrie Irving. They're going to dominate the usage. Both probably play mid-30s minutes. Again, Kevin Durant, uh, maybe a little bit of a higher floor, but Harden's going to be playing a lot of the point, which really raises his floor and his ceiling. So um, I really like both net stars in a high total game missing uh, you know, one of the members of the big three. Now, the interesting part about the, the first a regular season slate is trying to figure out what are these regular season re regular season rotations going to be like? What's the starting lineup going to be for Brooklyn? My guess is they continue the same starting lineup as last year when one of Harden or Kyrie, Kyrie Irving was out, and that was uh, Blake Griffin at the five, KD at the four, um, Joe Harris, um, Harden, and then Bruce Brown. So that's my guess for the starting lineup, but they, they could go a couple different directions. They have a couple of veteran bigs and Aldridge and Millsap, and maybe one of those guys start. Um, so again, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the starting lineup. But yeah, both Brooklyn Nets guys, I, both Brooklyn Nets stars, I think are very, very safe plays with a lot of upside. All right, so going down a little bit more. So Joe Harris at 5.8K. If you guys watch my NBA content, you know I don't like playing score-independent players. Joe Harris is score-independent. He had a really bad postseason Um I just, it's going to be hard for me to prioritize him. This is definitely going to set up for a stars and scrub slate, and he's priced in the mid-range. So 
again, it's going to be really difficult for me to get to him. Blake Griffin at 5'4", I assume starts at the 5 and probably plays low 20s in minutes. Makes him a relatively safe play, but you do have a couple uh, guys off the bench, who I think will come off the bench, who I think will look a little bit better point per dollar. So Blake Griffin, safer option, but don't expect big minutes. Now, will Nick Claxton be in this regular rotation? That's a question um, that I'm not 100% sure. You know, we have Aldridge and Millsap, a lot of bigs now on this team. So I'm not convinced Nick Claxton is going to be in the regular rotation. I would think Aldridge and Millsap have a spot over him. And at 3.9 and 3.8 carry specs, I think both make for pretty good value plays. Even though, again, at this point in their career, neither are the same player. They're both a little bit washed up. But they're still good point per minute guys. And we saw that in the preseason. Like when they get minutes, they're productive. So Aldridge and Millsap, I'm assuming both are going to be in the in this rotation. I think, you know, we probably don't get as many minutes as Blake Griffin. But if we get 15-ish, 15 to 20, I think both make for pretty good value plays. And then I have some interesting Patty Mills too off the bench, who uh, probably will play some backup point guard. Uh, you know, we saw what he could do in the Olympics, lit it up for Australia. Uh, obviously going to be playing alongside a lot higher usage guys and guys like KD and Harden, but I still think Patty Mills firmly in play for value. And then Bruce Brown as well. Um, my guess is he starts. My only issue with Bruce Brown is regular season and in the postseason, the minutes were very up and down from him. Some games he'd play mid-30s minutes, some games he'd play like 15. So that's the rest of Bruce Brown. The positive is he is a guy that can kind of do it all. Um, you know, he's not a great score, but he can stuff the stat sheet. And I, I'm assuming he starts. So, um, yeah, there actually is a decent amount to consider here for Brooklyn uh, for value. And we have the backup bigs. We have Patty Mills. We have Bruce Brown. Um, I'm not sure. Look to anyone else. Like, will James Johnson be in the regular rotation? Possibly. Like, this is my guess for the rotation. KD 1, Harden 2, Joe Harris 3, Blake Griffin 4, Aldridge 5, Millsap 6, Patty Mills 7, Bruce Brown 8, and then probably one of Claxton or James Johnson for the ninth guy. That's my guess for the rotation. Maybe a guy like Bembry sneaks in there for a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm expecting for Brooklyn in the first game. All right, moving on to Milwaukee. So uh, Milwaukee is going to be without Dante DiVincenzo, without Bobby Portis, and without Rodney Hood. So here's another one where it's like, all right, what is Milwaukee's rotation going to be like? So obviously we have the big three, Giannis, Katie, Drew Holiday. Probably all three play low to mid-30s minutes. Um, and then, you know, Brooke Lopez probably starts and plays mid to high 20s minutes. Um, I'm guessing Grayson Allen starts at the two because we've been seeing that a lot in the preseason, which makes him a viable value play. And then, so that's five. Again, Content's going to be in the rotation, six. I'm pretty sure George Hill, veteran's going to be in the rotation, that's seven. Um, and then you look below that. Jeff Teague's no longer in this roster. So it's like, all right, who else is going to be in the rotation? I think it's going to be two young guys. I think Nawara cracks the rotation. He had a, a couple big games in the preseason, a guy that is not afraid to shoot the ball. And then S. Mann. I'm guessing he's going to play the backup big role without Bobby Portis, right? Because, like, who else is really going to play? They're not going to run a seven-man rotation in the regular season. So, again, Giannis 1, Milton 2, Drew 3, Lopez 4, Connaughton 5, George Hill 6, Grayson Allen 7. And then I'm thinking it's S. Mam and Nora. Maybe Thanos is out to the combo gets a little bit of run too, but that's what I'm guessing the rotation is going to be for this game. So, let's go back to the top and Giannis at 10K. I think a very, very safe spend up. Should play mid-30s minutes. Obviously can go get a triple-double every single game. I love the matchup here, too, for Giannis. I really, really do like Giannis. Now, guys like Middleton, Drew Holiday, I think are going to go un, like basically unowned on this slate. But it makes sense, right? It's really hard to get to mid-range when uh, there's so many good stars in this place, uh, on, this, on this slate. So, again, guys like Middleton, Drew Holiday, I think are going to be very low-owned. I'm fine going to either of those guys for tournaments. Um, probably would be a small lean for me to Drew Holiday over at Middleton. Um, but yeah, both are going to be low-owned plays. It's going to be hard to to prioritize those two guys. Brooke Lopez at 5'9". Again, the price point I don't love. Probably plays 25 to 30 minutes. I would have wished he was cheaper. Um, Grayson Allen is in play. I'm guessing he starts at the 2. Now, Grayson Allen a little bit reliant on the scoring. But I think he probably starts and plays mid-20s minutes, which makes him firmly in play for value. And then a couple guys off the bench. Pat Connaughton, 4-7. Eh, feels a little bit too pricey for me. George Hill at 3-9. Again, kind of washed at this point of his career, but probably plays mid-teens, minutes off the bench. Viable value play. And then you have the two young guys in Nawara and s Man, who there's no guarantee they're going to be in the rotation, right? I'm not 100% sure that both these guys are going to be in the rotation, but I'm guessing they're, they're both going to play. So 
Both are at min price. Both have some rest. There's there's a chance to get a DNP. But yeah, Nawara, again, preseason GOAT, a guy that can score the ball in a very short amount of time, can put up a lot of points. So I think he's intriguing for a sneaky GPP play. And I think S-Mam, too, without Bobby Portis, my guess is he, is he plays the backup five role. And you look at the opposite side, right? Brooklyn is now kind of a different team. They have a lot of bigs. Last year, not so much. This year, again, you have Blake Griffin. You have Aldridge. You have Millsap. You have Nick Claxton. So... My guess is S. Mam is going to get some minutes off the bench, uh, and he's a pretty solid point per minute guy, rookie that uh, put up some big numbers in in the summer league and the preseason. So, um, I think those two are sneaky GPP plays in Nawara and S. Mam. Right, and then the final game is Golden State and the Lakers. So, uh, we'll start at the top with Steph Curry at nine point four K. Also, again. A lot of upside, maybe a little bit of a lower floor as opposed to some other stars in the slate. But without Clay Thompson, he's going to be their clear number one guy. And uh, he had a couple big games in the preseason, a couple 50 plus fancy point games in only three quarters. So obviously the upside is massive with a guy like Steph Curry. So I do like him. We'll get him out there for tournaments. I think Draymond Green is very safe at 6'8, probably going to play low to mid 30s minutes, a stat sheet stuffer, and go get a triple double any single game. The issue is the price. Right in a, in a slate where there's so many stars, the mid range is going to be hard to prioritize. Prioritize, excuse me. Again, it's still obviously no Clay Thompson, no Wiseman, um, Andrew Wiggins is six two. I'm not going there. Um, he just takes a backseat offensively. And then uh, Jordan Poole at four point eight k, I think, really sticks out. Um, this is a guy that you know down the stretch last year when Golden State was banged up, he had some big big games, and he's going to be the number two on offense when Clay Thompson is out. And this is a guy that is a really good shooter, and his confidence has has really gone up. Um, you know, he put up some big games in the preseason. He'll handle some of the point guard duties as well. Um, I think Jordan Poole is very underpriced for eight. Really like him. I think he has a good chance to win a most improved player this year. I think it's either going to be him or NAW. Um, but yeah, four point eight K that just really sticks out. So really like Jordan Poole at that price. Kevon Looney at 4-1, I think it's a pretty safe value. Going to start at the center. This is a big Lakers front court, right? You have Anthony Davis. Um, you have DeAndre Jordan, Dwight Howard. We'll see what they do with the starting lineup. But either way, I think Kevon Looney probably plays at least 20 minutes. Not the best fantasy uh, point per minute guy, but he doesn't need to be if he's going to play 20 plus minutes. It's only 4.1K. So like Looney there for value. Um, and then you have some interesting, like you have a lot of wings off the bench that are probably going to get some decent run. Otto Porter at five through is pretty solid in the uh, preseason. The issue is the price point um, and like how many minutes he's going to play, right? You have Wiggins and Draymond that probably get around 30 minutes. Obviously, Steph and Poole are going to play big minutes too. So it's like, how many minutes are left over? Well, you have like backup wing and Otto Porter. You have a backup wing and Andre Iguodala. JTA might see some minutes. And then you have Bielitsa that's going to play the backup five. Um, that like again, all these guys should be in the rotation. So, you know, how many minutes left over is, is for Otto Porter, right? If I knew he's going to play big minutes, I would like him, but I just don't know if there's enough minutes at that price point for me to get to Otto. Damian Lee, they said he's going to be in the regular rotation. Um, you know, he had a pretty solid preseason. I think he's a viable contrarian value play. And then again, Iguodala, Bielitsa, I'm pretty sure for sure are going to be in the rotation uh, tomorrow. JTA. Fringe. He was out of the rotation last preseason game, um, so I'm a little bit worried about him and if he's going to be uh, in this regular rotation. So let's just think about it, right? So Steph Curry's one, Draymond's two, Wiggins is three, Porter's four, Poole's five, Looney's six, Lee is seven, Iguodala's eight, Bielitsa's nine. So that's nine guys I'm almost positive are going to be in the rotation. JTA would be 10, but again, they have a lot of wings, so we'll see. Um, I think there's a chance he gets a DNP. But yeah, a guy like Iguodala... Same thing I said about a couple other guys. He's definitely washed up in this point of his career. But if he's going to play 15, 20 minutes of the bench, sure, you can make the argument for him. The guy that I think does have some upside of the bench here is Bielitsa, um, especially if Looney gets in some foul trouble, right? They're a little bit thin in the front court. No Wiseman, um, Draymond's undersized. So I think Bielitsa is a sneaky play here. He's a sharpshooter, can knock down some threes. I'm thinking he gets some solid run off the bench. So a little bit intrigued by him for GPPs. But yeah, that's it for Golden State. So let's finish it up with the LA Lakers, who are very banged up. Again, it's going to be interesting to see who they run out there as a starting lineup. But the big three of LeBron, AD, Westbrook, I think all play 30 to 35 minutes. Um, 
you know, it's going to be, I would rank them probably behind some of those other stars just because, again, there's three mouths to feed as opposed to Golden State where you really just have kind of Steph Curry as the main guy. Milwaukee, it's really Giannis is the main guy. And Brooklyn, is, it's the big two. So these Laker guys, um, you know, they're going to be solid this year. But um, at their respective prices, I would say they're a little bit uh, secondary place to me in LeBron, AD Westbrook. I think my preferred option would be Anthony Davis, especially if he's going to play a lot this, at the five. Um, again, it's interesting to see what the Lakers do with the starting lineup. Do they start like a DeAndre Jordan or this, do they start AD at the five? We'll see. If AD starts the five, that is a boost to him. Um, has more upside when he plays the five. So, yeah, the Lakers' big three all in play. I would say all three a little bit more contrarian options. Uh, the other centers in Dwight Howard and DeAndre Jordan, again, it'd be interesting to see what they do. Um, I'm guessing Dwight Howard's going to be in the rotation, but probably play. What will happen is he'll start the second quarter most likely and play six, seven minutes and start the fourth quarter and play six, seven minutes. So we're probably going to get, you know, 12-ish minutes from Dwight Howard. At that price point, a little much. He is a really good point printer guy, but I don't know if I can stomach that price. Now, DeAndre Jordan, we'll see. Again, if he starts, I think there's probably – Probably plays around 15 minutes, which would make him in play. Another solid point for a guy that can block some shots. So probably prefer Jordan to uh, Dwight Howard for the price points. And then uh, we know THT's out. We know Reese is out. Ellington's out. Kendrick Nunn and Malik Monk. Malik Monk, probable. Kendrick Nunn is questionable. So, yeah. Again, what are the Lakers going to do this starting lineup? Um, it'll be interesting to see. But... Uh, you know, guys like Nunn and Monk, if they're both in, I think are fine contrarian plays. The issue here is a lot of that usage is, you know, the big three of the Lakers, right? LeBron, Westbrook, one of those two guys is going to handle the ball at all times. And you're going to have Anthony Davis probably play mid-30s minutes. So um, the secondary options for the Lakers are a little bit hard to get to just because, um, again, there's the big three have to eat, right? Carmelo at 3.9K is viable. Again, I think he's going to play, I would say, low 20s minutes for Melo. A sharpshooter, I think he is viable for value. Um, Rondo, I think, is a sneaky GBP play, too. A guy that can stuff the stat sheet. We'll see about Kendrick Nunn. Now, if Kendrick Nunn is in, a little bit less confident in Rondo's minutes. If Kendrick Nunn is out, then Rondo probably gets some solid run off the bench with the backup point guard. So, a little bit of interest there in Rondo. Um, Baysmore, 3-6. I mean, he's up and down, but he's probably going to have to play low 20s minutes. So, definitely viable, too. Let's think about this Lakers rotation. All right, so... LeBron 182, Westbrook 3. Um, I would guess, so if DeAndre Jordan starts, then then I think both him and Dwight Howard play. If DeAndre Jordan doesn't start, I think there's a chance he's not in the rotation, but we'll see. So we'll say one of those bigs for Monk is probable. He's going to be in the rotation 5. We don't know if Kendrick Dunn's going to play. Mello's for sure going to be in the rotation. That's 6. Rondo for sure is at 7. Bazemore for sure is that that's 8. And then, yeah, if none plays, that would be 9. I'm guessing that would be the rotation for the Lakers. So... Yeah, a couple interesting value plays, but uh, really hard to feel super confident when you have the big three that's going to dominate the usage. But yeah, guys, I think that's going to do it for the video today. So if you haven't enjoyed the content, make sure to leave a like button in the video. Again, try to aim for 150 likes. Every single like really helps me out. Um, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment. Let me know who is going to win you the big money tomorrow. Again, I'll be doing a YouTube live stream um, to do a general Q and A, not sure exactly what time might be earlier in the afternoon. It might be a little bit before lock. I will let you guys know on Twitter, but yeah, thanks again, guys have a great night and I will see you all tomorrow in the live stream. Super excited for the NBA regular season to kick off.